Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your guide into the world of Chinese language and culture. And today is Thanksgiving Day. I'm thankful that you're here with me, uh, continuing on this journey of learning how Chinese language is used. So I go with review with what we learned yesterday and put up my slide. So yesterday we talked about so word by word is once it's triggered, you cannot fold it back or pick it back. Um, the imagery comes from, comes from the, the archery, you release the arrow. And um, in, it, it's similar to Chinese uh, English expression like once you let the genie out of the bottle or once you open the Pandora box. So something big is going to happen and you don't exactly know what's going to happen. So that's kind of a risk taking level. Um, it, it sounds like risky, right? But it could be also like a turn out good. Like you take a risk, like do something not out of your you know, comfort zone, right? So um, you end up actually enjoy it and cannot stop doing it. So that's the other, like at the flip of the meaning. So it could be a risk taking, that's the shared you know, property of this uh, expression, but it could turn out a good thing for you actually. So as an example, like once I started one word a day um, project for uh, since this year like this is the 15th episode so I cannot stop it because I enjoy sharing uh, the culture that I know well of uh, with the English speaking world um, so that's yesterday's today we're going to learn 时间不美. 时间不美 altogether means um, you just you discover some you you find some um, cash or gold in this in this word um, you don't hide it you return it to the authority um, so that's the, the the full meaning now we break down to individual ones so shi is the same so yesterday it's pick today it's pick to it's simply a, a verb with a hand gesture involved in that character right jin jin is a word that comes from its image. On the top, we have this person. We have learned the structure of a person, right? Left and right, two strokes like that. It's a person. And then the, the one, the two horizontal lines, like number two with a vertical line in the middle, that is the character for uh, soil or ground. And then we have something like a signifier like below the ground. So the whole image, um, gives you a picture of something about the person hiding something under the ground. And that becomes um, the word gold. How so? Because in ancient times, there's no bank, there's no safe for you to keep your money. Right? And um, we made it uh, in, in, in the metal form so it doesn't deteriorate over time. Right? So that's the ancient currency and that's what you accumulated the wealth that you want to keep for yourself. And because there were, there were no banking system back then, so um, you know that's the common way to store it under the ground and you have to hide it, nobody knows. Um, so that's the, uh, the origin of the jin. The third word we have learned is a negation. Uh, its original sound is a bu. And actually, in a previous slide, we have yi fa bu ke So it's pronounced, it should be pronounced as bu. But in this case, it becomes bu. And uh, actually, according to the, the dictionary or text, like if you go to Google Translate, you put in this phrase, and you can still see it marked as shi jin bu mei instead of shi jin bu mei. I put a second tone here. Bu, simply because that's what I heard. That's what I said when I used this language, like in real life situation. Um, and it could be conditional 
tones um, because the next word after it is the falling tone. So it will be harder to pronounce like two falling tones together. Bu mei. It's harder than bu mei. Right? That makes sense, right? Um, okay, the last word, mei. Okay, by now you know Chinese language is made up oftentimes with a sound maker and meaning maker. So in this case, we have this smaller <laughs> signifier structure. Actually, it's the meaning maker. It is the sun, something related to the sun. And then the right side is pronounced by itself, wei. But combined together with the sun, it becomes mei. The meaning is the shadow of the sun. So the whole saying, the whole word becomes like something shady. So the phrase, if I put together, it means you pick up gold, but you don't hide it. Um, so I try to find a corresponding concept in English, and I only find the opposite meaning in English, uh, finders, keepers. So that's often like in children's game, say so. Um, but in this case, it's finders, but not keepers. Um, so that was, this phrase was used often when I was growing up uh, in a situation like in school, especially the, like a teacher taught to you like, if you, you, you find some money on the ground, uh, you return it to the class, like return it to the authority. You don't try to hide it. Like you, if it doesn't belong to you, you return it to the um, authority. Um, and on the right, I find uh, something related to hiding wealth under the ground. And this phrase is not the, you know, the magic four category um, of this classical you know, Chinese expressions in four characters, but in seven characters, it told a very interesting story. So what this guy is doing is dug a hole and hide the money under the ground. And because, because this money actually doesn't belong to him, he, he got it somewhere, it kind of a pickers, right? He, he picked it up somewhere, but not stolen, right? But he kind of know whose money this is, like definitely not his, but he tried to hide it. And, you know, this is just an average guy and this is kind of like a crime back then too. So he, he doesn't feel, um, you know, good about it. And he doesn't want people to know that he actually did this. So, you know, it's a exaggerated way to say um, that by putting up a sign, like he is actually announcing to the world um, that the, <laughs> the, their, their, their gold hidden on the ground. So the phrase, means this place, they, this place, Wu is actually the traditional Chinese of written as no, like nothing, nada over there, right? Um, but this is the traditional way of uh, Wu. You can see how, how much simplified of that same concept into the um, contemporary uh, simplified Chinese version. Uh, so no, yin, um, we have seen this with um, very briefly. So it's a silver. So gold and silver are the two main currencies or symbols of wealth back then. San bai liang. San, we have seen that in San Qian Chi, right? In, in the poem, the, the, the waterfall poem, um, we talked about San Qian, but here it's San Bai. This is 100, so 300. And the liang is the ancient um, heavy metal measurement, kind of like comparison to, to ounces or troy ounces for gold, right? So the whole thing is like, he doesn't want people to know that the, he, he was doing this, but instead of really like shut up and uh, do it, 
he kind of have this inner guilt and he has to put up this sign to say, okay, there's no money of hidden over here <laughs> and put the sign directly on top of where he hide it. Um, so there, there's an even funnier, like a second phrase saying after this is that he even named himself. It's like your neighbor Wang R is the name of the guy, right? Um, I didn't steal it. <laughs> so the whole funny story is just put this ridiculous picture of somebody who committed a crime. Like somebody is not a pro, like he still have conscious and he, he struggled to, you know, to take the money that doesn't belong to him and put it somewhere. But he has to, um, he tried to hide it, right? But he by doing put up a sign over here, he unintentionally announced it to the world. And that's, it's just a funny expression to say like a human, you know, one of the few human follies, like you try to hide your intention, uh, something you're, you cover up your acts before, but um, some, some, traces of your behavior not as obvious as putting up a sign directly to that um, but some traces of your behavior can still be a telling sign of that you know you don't have inner peace you don't you don't feel comfortable about what you did um, so that's that's the story for the day i hope you enjoy the show and um, if you like it subscribe to, uh, hope to see you again